Hello, everyone. In this video, we're going to solve this very challenging problem, the last problem from our national team round from the year 2021. So let's go ahead and read this problem. Mr. Red Heart's favorite number is eight, and his next favorite number is the least power of two who is eight digits immediately to the left of the unit's digit can include seven eights and one other digit K. If his next favorite number is two to the N, we want to compute the last two digits of K plus N. So what this might look like is this next favorite number will look something like this. So we will have some nine digits here and Here's the units digit, and seven of these eight digits are eight, and one of these digits is K. So this is a very challenging problem. And um, it, even though we don't have the luxury of doing this in the actual um, contest, what we can do is ask the internet afterwards. So let's see what this forum post has to offer. So here are some indication of hints here. So first of all, considering that to the N has at least nine digits, it's safe to assume that N is big enough for our general purposes having to do with modular arithmetic or something. So next we can just let this digit here be Z. Um, and this of course isn't zero because this whole number is supposed to be a power of two, so it can't end with zero. And um, since n is at least 20, it, this number here should be divisible by something like two to the 20. Okay, so what does this give us? It gives us that it's divisible by a bunch of smaller powers of two. And, and now in order for a number to be divisible by two, four, eight, 16, and so on for a bunch of multiples of powers of two. What we can do is just check the last m digits to check if it's a multiple of two to the m. So that is the divisibility rule for any power of two. So for example, for these nine digits, all we need to do to check if the whole number is divisible by two to the nine is to check these last nine digits. And that's how we will try to find out what these digits are. So let's go ahead and look at these last three digits here. These can either be 88Z, 8KZ, or K8Z. So let's look at each of these cases. So Firstly, let's check 88Z. So if it's 88Z, then these last three digits indicate that we should check whether this is divisible by eight. So the only digit Z that would work here, so that 88Z is divisible by eight, is if Z is equal to eight. Note that Z can't be equal to zero as we previously established. So this number is 888. Okay, so we check the next digit here. If we add another eight here, it turns out that 8888 um, is not div um, divisible by 16. So this has to be a different digit than eight. So if we want to check what digit this has to be in order for this to be um, divisible by 16, this has to be a different digit. And now I just keep on piling up eights here. So once we add some more eights here, we can then determine um, what this digit here is by, by our knowledge that this should be divisible by two to the seven. And by solving a modular equation, we, um, we can determine that this has to be five. And then finally, if we add one more eight here, it turns out that this number here is not divisible by two to the eight. And therefore, um, this eight eight Z does not work. 
So this whole case doesn't work. There goes that case. Let us check HKZ next. So if it's HKZ, then we can just fill out the rest of the eights. So there's six eights like here. OK, so now we proceed to try to solve the modular equation that this number here is divisible by 2 to the 9. And that might look something like 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 0, 0, plus some two-digit number kz is 0 mod 512. And solving this gives um, the two-digit number kz is 32 mod 512. And this can just be gotten by dividing this whole number by 512. So this gives exactly one solution. So this whole case here, so after solving that, this whole case gives 832. Finally, let's go ahead and look at this case here, K8Z. Then again, we can um, pile up all these digits here. There must be six eights like that, and this must be divisible by two to the nine. And so you set up a modular equation here as well. Zero plus 100K plus Z is um, zero mod 512. And it turns out when you solve this, you do not get any solutions where K and Z are digits. So we can eliminate this case here. So what are we left with? We're simply left with the only solution is when this ends in 832. And so this number here is simply a number that ends with 8888888832. And we can determine that um, the digit k is 3. So that's the first part of the problem. So the second part is trying to determine what n is. And we don't actually need to determine it, the exact value of n because it asks to compute the last two digits of k plus n. Since we know what k is, we just need to find the last two digits of n in order to compute the last two digits of k plus n. In other words, we need to find n modulo 100. So as we determined to the end, um, ends with 832. So let us try to find n mod 100. So from here, let's just try to use some uh, standard modular arithmetic tricks. So let's go ahead and take these last three digits and try to use them to our advantage. So we know that 2 to the n is 832 modulo 1000. And what we can do here is use the Chinese remainder theorem to simplify our problem. So firstly, we have the mod 8 part to the n is 832 is divisible by 8, so it's 0. This um, we already know since n is greater than 20. This is obviously going to be 0 mod 8 for all n greater than 3. So what we want to focus on instead is the other one. That is mod 125. And this modulo 125 is 82. So we'd like to find the appropriate n. Well, what we know by Euler's totient theorem is that if we apply that, we know that 2 to the 100 is 1 mod 125 because the totient of 125 is equal to 100. So why is this important? It's important because all we need to do now is um, determine some n, like 
between zero and 99, because what this means is that um, if we do find n modulo 100, all numbers that are n modulo 100 will work. So that's why this compute the last two digits of k plus n works out. So how do we actually solve this? Well, from this point forward, we would really like to go guessing and checking. But before we go off on a huge guess and check, let's try to reduce this problem down um, a little. So in order to reduce this problem down, um, we can try reducing down this modulo here. So what we have is, um, we, we, what we can first do is do two to the n is two mod five. And this will actually give us some information about n. So what does this give? This gives n is one mod four since um, to the n repeats every um, four terms. So if n is one mod four, what we know here is that n is equal to four m plus one for some uh, integer m. So what we get here is that two to the four m plus one is 82 mod 125. And we can simplify this down to 16 to the m is 41 mod 125. And the benefit of this is that we just need to check um, m for 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 all the way up to 24. So that's certainly less cases to check. So let's go ahead and erase up here. So we know that n is 4m plus 1, and m satisfies this modular equation here. What can help um, speed up our computation is that 16 squared actually happens to be 256, which mod 125 is just 6 mod 125. So at this point here, if we just consider all odd m and all even m, we can just keep on raising powers of six. So we would want to check all of the cases where we have one uh, and 16 here. And then we'd want to check six, six times 16, um, six squared, six squared times 16, and so on and so forth, all the way up to six, 12 to the 12 and six to the 12 times 16. So checking all of these will give us the answer. And what we can get after checking all of these is that the only solution is m is 11 mod 25. And therefore, n is 4 times 11 plus 1, or 45 mod 125, wait, mod 100, sorry, mod 100. And therefore, our answer is our last two digits of k plus n, um, which is um, k plus n modulo 100, is k plus n. So we know that k is 3, n is 45, and this modulo 100 is 48. And those are the last two digits of k plus n. And that is the problem it's solved. And thank you for uh, to the forum post for giving us a, um, a helping hand on this solution. And, um, and it was a great year, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Hi, everybody. This is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.